Hi, Alex here from Black Sheep IT Consulting. Uh, welcome to this No Code Along. In this No Code Along, we are going to discover a few interesting bits about the Cloud Gateway REST API. And before we go too deep, let me just show you something you already might know if you're a frequent user of the Siebel Management Console, which I have open here. So you have, of course, the management page where you see your enterprise or your enterprise server, and you can flip that open and you can see the sessions across the enterprise. So now if you have multiple servers, there will be multiple sessions. Now this fetches some interesting information about which components are active and which users are logged in. So there's a running session on the AI object manager for Zadmin. Okay. Uh, the running sessions are of course interesting. So what is going on right now, for example, for a user called Dev2? No, Dev2 has a running session on Siebel call center and has just uh, is just in the well that sounds like well home page view. Okay, so we know this use the last action of the user was go to the home page view. So here I am, this user. So dev2 uh, session here. So let's go to different view. And while I click, you will notice something on the bottom of the screen. Ignore it for now. Uh, just going to the My Accounts view. And I'll go back to the SMC and refresh the query. And I can see that, well, the account list view has been completely uh, built. And actually the last applet action was a drill down on the homepage applet. So that's interesting information, but it's, it sweeps by more or less here. So you can keep refreshing this for one user and uh, keep watching, try to figure it out. But what if we can deliberately request this information for the current user session and let's say put it into a history of the current session, much like you have already seen. So when I keep drilling down here, for example, you notice there's a toast popping up with the exact same information. So I'm coming from a drill down and I've completed that view. Oh, there's another pop-up. There's, uh, well, the broadcast message was executed to actually populate the broadcast summary. And I can keep, for example, press a query button and I'll see, okay, the last applet method was a new query on the on the applet or execute query. So you see whenever I some whenever I click, it pops up that same information. And so this is the setup. We want to display the session information of the current session in a meaningful manner. So the toasts are probably not very meaningful, but you you see what I'm get, getting to. I'm getting to um, visualizing the chain of events, the session specific events, somehow in a kind of history. We could we could easily save this data or display it in a list or in a pop-up or you know in a rolling window, um, whatever you like. So how do we get the data? Let's go back to our first starting point, the Siebel Management Console. What goes on behind the, the scenes when I just go to enterprises and sessions or components or servers, doesn't matter. What goes on behind the scenes? Well, uh, the Chrome Developer Tools is about to tell us. So I've opened the Developer Tools, go to the Network tab. The Network tab is very helpful, of course, understanding what an application is doing. So this one is doing a lot of XHR, XML HTTP requests. So there's no XML involved, actually. That's kind of the old fashioned way of saying it's fetching data and it's using jQuery to do that. So jQuery is used by Oracle for that. So we can just filter on only the fetch statements. And let's just clear 
the log here. Now let's just refresh that. And you see there is a request um, that being made, an XHR request. So what's that, if you click on that request, you see what's actually going on. So there's a URL going to the Siebel REST API, v1.0 gives it away, slash Cloud Gateway. So that's the Cloud Gateway REST API that's used, and it retrieves the sessions list for the training enterprise. So all you need to know is practically the name of the enterprise, and you have the URL, and it's a simple get. So uh, there's, of course, some headers, there's authorization, and uh, there's, of course, a response. And the response is JSON. And that's a big chunk of JSON. Uh, not sure if I can, yeah, make it prettier here. That's all the records, not just 10 records like Siebel does, but 43. Uh, so it's not a Siebel application. 43 records in that, let's say, virtual table that is queried here. It's information from, uh, of course, the gateway. So the interesting part is I want to have only one session. So I would query for the object manager login and probably the status of running. And when I run that query, I notice it's not retrieving any data again. So what happens here is that the SMC is taking all these data and when I run the query, it just filters it internally. So the data is still there, but it's just filtered. So it's not retrieving, uh, it's not sending a search specification to the cloud gateway and say, give me, give me that particular search result. That will be a little bit of a ro roadblock um, when we come to the implementation of what you just saw. Okay, so we have now learned that we can send a REST request to, to the Cloud Gateway REST API, get a list of sessions. And of course you can experiment with that. So what if I click on servers? Okay, that's a similar, very similar get request, right? For just servers and the response is, well, one, one record, right? <laughs> One server is running on mine. So that would be any number of servers you have. And you could easily see which servers are running. And let's say for the running servers, like server 01, you can get the sessions on that server. And that would be, as you can see, another GET request, this time with a specific server name and session. So the URL is pretty self-explaining. So you would probably want to try that in uh, an application like Postman. So let's take this URL, just need sessions. Copy that, go to trusty Postman and try get request. Well, that fails, we're not authenticated, of course not. So let's change that, we do basic auth, we have this admin already. So let's see if that's any better. Oh yeah, <laughs> much better. So there, there are all these session records in a chunky JSON format. And somewhere there's our dev2. So let's do a find here. Uh, yeah, there's, there's our dev2 session, our user named dev2. And yeah, there's the running. So that's the, the whole JSON chunk somewhere. Yeah. Oh, that's it here. Okay, got it. Uh, so that is the whole record set. And our task is to, well, make the Siebel application call upon the Cloud Gateway REST API and grab that data and filter it and then display it in the UI again for the current session, event-based, so to speak, when, when a click happens or navigation happens. So during my investigation, I, what we want to do is an outbound REST call from Siebel to the Cloud Gateway API. 
um, but nonetheless an outbound REST call. So we could use EI HTTP transport, and I, actually my first try was using that. But then I dig, dug a little bit deeper. I was curious, is there any, let's say, background information in the internal application container, which hosts the Cloud Gateway application, as we know? So let's go into the web apps and Siebel. And there's the Siebel web apps folder. And there's a REST specs folder, REST specifications. And it's a bunch of JSON files. And I looked at a lot of them. Some are big, some are small. And the one I would like to open now is a Siebel ZG Cloud Gateway Admin Session Spec.json. Now, JSON is already a good hint, so let's open this one. And it's not just any JSON, it's a Swagger 2.0 file. That's good news, that's compatible with the Siebel Outbound REST framework. So we could import that and get a business service and integration objects, and we'll actually do that. So there's a path, enterprises, a variable, enterprise name, and sessions. That's the exact path we had, and it lists sessions present in the enterprise and returns JSON. That's all nice and true. And it has a 200 response if successful, and so on. And there's another one for uh, individual servers with server name as a, as a variable. Okay. So this is very interesting. And then, of course, there's the data returned. Uh, we see those columns, the, uh, the OM login, the applet, biscomp. So it's all described here, described as in Swagger. So we can put this to good use later in uh, yeah, the web service import wizard, maybe. So why not just start with uh, importing that Swagger file? So here we are in Web Tools. Let's uh, just create a new workspace. And that's the CGW REST API 0317. Okay, the comment, of course. There we go. And we can just hop on to the wizard, the web service wizard, start that, and we can upload the file we found. So here in that REST specs folder, let's see if we can find it, Siebel CG admin session spec. So you see there's also server spec, so of course you could investigate, but that's the file we're interested in now. Let's click next. And it finds, okay, it will be, will be generating one web service definition, the outbound REST service, one proxy business service, and two integration object definitions. Yeah. And we'll see what we do with these warnings uh, later. So we submit that. And I have to say, I've already done this on this environment. So this is a, literally a duplicating uh, the effort here, but uh, let's finish it for good measure. And let's see if we have a new business service. CG something. Yeah, that's the first one I created in the, the same manner. And that's the, second one just created a few moments ago and that business service has oh probably two methods yeah so there's the get all sessions and then there's the well it found a method name <laughs> so there's two uh, remember those two one for the enterprise one for the server two operations and there's the input arguments and I can see from here that the parameter, the variable for the enterprise name, for example, is missing. We have to add that. So it's not complete. It's not operational yet. Uh, we look at the user properties. 
we have the Siebel web service name. So it has created that web service here. Um, so we can go to Siebel application. and go to administration web services outbound rest outbound rest and yeah there, there it is the one just generated moments ago and the one i generated a while ago to prepare for this video so it's as you can see it's different in that i replaced host name and port with real values and HTTP with HTTPS of course so um, yeah and also completed uh, this one so this one's for the server so it requires this enterprise name and server name variable in the path and the other one just an enterprise name so get all the sessions so to um, cater for that variable name you have to do something like this so you go to the method arguments so let's start with get all session and you add a new argument and call it exactly like it's in the outbound web service so here enterprise name enterprise dash name lowercase and you want this to be replaced in the path. So you add colon path. That's the syntax for outbound for the outbound REST framework. So that will be replaced in your path. It's a string as input. It's not optional. So that's just fine. And the second one has not just the enterprise name, but also the server name. Okay, so you have to add those two and you have to amend the, let me just copy paste that here. So the second one is exactly the same. So you have to amend the URLs to reflect your real uh, server. Okay. Okay, and now we're going to test it. So I've, I'm inspecting my workspace. And in the business service simulator, I can now pick the service name because I'm inspecting the new workspace. And let's try the get all sessions method, the one which shows the session for the enterprise. And input properties, you need four. You need that enterprise name colon path training is the name of my enterprise here and you need the security properties so because it's basic authentication username colon security using as admin here password security and type security set to basic so this will be good enough to let's remove that prior output so when we run this we get a Siebel message back. Why, why a Siebel message? Because the output argument is, let's check it, the output argument is integration object data type. So it's an instance of that new integration object. And since this is a little bit unwieldy, I'm just going to save it to a file, which yields me a temporary XML downloaded. I can just open this in Notepad++ and I can clearly see that there are, is a lot of data there. So what about my developer2 uh, record? Uh, yes. Okay, the last thing that happened in the developer2 session on the applet level was executing a query on the SIS account entry applet. So the information's all there. And it's a lot of information. So we get 40 or I don't know how much you get. If you get 100 or more, you get quite a lot of records, just like the SMC gets all these records and then has to filter them. 
So our next goal is to filter this data so we only have what we want, a only a running session for uh, Dev2 or for any given username, right? <laughs> so we would like to be flexible and say, okay, you can search for any run state and any user. Let's, let's say that's what we want to query. Okay, but we can't send, or it, I've tried, believe me, <laughs> obviously you can't send any query parameters to the Cloud Gateway, not in the version I'm using. And that, so uh, we have to filter, we have to get all the data and then filter it and present the filtered results, if you will. Of course, you could send this uh, nice Siebel message. It's a nice property set. And you can send it to any business service you like. You can write an eScript business service and do the parsing and searching and then return only the matching result property sets, right? Uh, easy enough to achieve. That would be a few lines of eScript code, but this is a no code along. So we try to stick, stay outside of the code editor. And one business service comes to my mind, which is the EAI data transformation engine or data mapper. So let's see what we can do with the data mapper. So here I am in the data map editor. And what I would have to do before I use it would have to deliver my workspace. So here we go in Web Tools version. Version it and submit and deliver. Otherwise, the data map editor can't find the integration objects. So that's uh, Cloud Gateway API v2. And yeah, I will be coming back when this is delivered. So delivered it is. And let's check back on that new business service. So we would like to use the get all sessions method. And that's the integration object that it uh, puts out. The second one puts out the same one as I can see. So, oh no, it's a different one, sorry. <laughs> uh, we could investigate, it's probably good, okay to use the same because it's the same output. But um, yeah, let's just make sure we use this integration object here for our data map. So log into a fresh uh, session. And then go to the data map editor and create a new map. Cloud Gateway map. Let's call it Cloud Gateway map. And the source object, that's our new integration object. And the target is actually the same because we don't want to kind of modify or map to a different structure. We want the same structure. So we can auto map and that's nice because that fills in all the component maps and field maps for result so <laughs> there you have it good to go but hey where's the filter that means that's a map one-to-one -one map you would get the exactly same output as the input but data mapper has quite a few secrets uh, one is the source source search specification. So you could specify, okay, that username, that's a field om underscore login equals, well, uh, well, what? <laughs> can we hard, we can hard code it here, but that's stupid, right? So we need a variable. So the variable So the variable could be, um, well, 
at rest with the ampersand, much like in uh, workflow processes. So it's a property or an argument or a variable. And let's call it username. But where do we do? We have to declare these variables. So that is actually not done in this view. You have to go to the data maps view. And here you declare your integration map arguments. So that was just a name, username, data type, text, and display name. Let's just keep things simple here. Okay, let's add another one uh, because the status, we want the status text to be sent in as a variable. So we have declared two variables now. So let's go back to the editor and let's end the that's the field name, the run state equals status with an ampersand in square brackets. Okay, so that will filter the source, so the incoming data, and only write to the outcoming instance, the matching result records. So essentially filtering, and we filter with data mapper. Why not? Because we can. So here's a slight correction to that search specification. I found out it has to be in brackets. So put a pair of parentheses around the whole expression, and then it will work. And now to check if it works, of course, we can use the business service simulator. So here I've prepared the call to the new outbound REST proxy service that calls the Cloud Gateway session API with the get all sessions method. And here are my input arguments. So again, we need to do all the security based arguments, uh, username, password, and type uh, to basic, and the enterprise name to be replaced in the path. So let's delete the output that we have here. And let's delete this one. And so we run this and we get a SIBO message back. Let's quickly save it to a file so we can preview it more easily. So this is all the data, all the current sessions running in this enterprise. And now the job is to run this through a data map to filter and we only want, let's say, uh, running sessions for Dev2, like, like this one. Okay, so the next part is to call the EI data transformation engine, which is the data map or business service with its execute method. And one of the major input, of course, is that big Siebel message. So we move it to input, and now we need additional properties. We need the name of the map, and we just copy paste that from here. So it's this one. Okay, and we have those two arguments. So we have a username argument. So let's put def2. And we have a status argument. And the status we're interested in is running. Okay, so we have a Siebel message, we have the map name, and we have the two input arguments. So let's run this, it gets us another Siebel message. Let's save it to a temporary file and let's see if it's different. And of course it, well, <laughs> thankfully it's different. It's only showing one session for Dev2, which is currently running, so I'm logged in as Dev2 in an incognito window. So that's why it shows up here. Nice. So with this knowledge, we can put together a workflow process 
with those two business services. So, and here is the workflow that I built uh, following my experiments with the business service simulator. The first business service call in that workflow is the, uh, well, the outbound REST proxy business service with the get all sessions method. And as you can see, it has the same input arguments as we used in the simulator, but this time the arguments are populated by process properties. So you can pass them in at runtime, the enterprise name, the cloud gateway username, cloud gateway password and security type. So all these process properties I have, of course, defined here, for example, and equipped with default strings for easier testing. So that will invoke the outbound REST API to call the Siebel Cloud Gateway API. And the output argument is well, the um, Cloud Gate, the Cloud Gateway Data Full Set process property will be populated with everything, the whole output of the business service. So we will have the Siebel message in there with the full data set. So that's why I call the process property cloud gateway data full set. And this process property is a hierarchy data type since it's a hierarchical property set now. So the next business service is the EI data transformation engine with the execute method and we pass it the map name. And of course we use a process property so we can change the map name easily and we populate the Siebel message from the full set. So that's the input and the username and status argu map arguments. We use, again, process properties to populate those. So let's have a quick look. So here, for example, are the filter status and filter username arguments defaulted to as admin and running. And the output of that is the Cloud Gateway data filtered set. So another hierarchical process property that now has the filtered set and that resides in the output of the workflow. So we can grab it once the workflow returns. Then we put in a little bit of a debugger. So there's just a little debug process property. So if that's set to true, it will write the filtered set to an output file. There is a process property to have a file path and it's using EI XML write to file, write EI message since it's a Siebel message. So we just have some debugging uh, yeah, if we need it. In order to test uh, the new workflow, we well, we use the business service simulator to use the good old workflow process manager, run process method, and here's the input. So I need a process name, of course, which is my new workflow process that I'm going to test. And I'm using, I'm providing the filter username, not the default admin, but dev2 and the default for the status is running. So this should yield all the running session data for the user named dev2. Okay, let's run this workflow now. And so the child types are the full set and the filtered set produced by the data mapper. So let's just open the temporary file and that's on top, that's the full set. So let's search for dev2 easier. So that's the input and here's the filtered set already with only one entry, one run session running for dev2. We find dev2 again in the full set, of course. So, but the interesting part is of course the one result, the matching result for running session for dev2 in the filtered set 
property. So now we have the workflow and now let's go back to our experimental outcome. So whenever I navigate in this application or click in the application, you can see that uh, toasts are updated with the session information and show the latest action on applets and business component, business services. So this happens every time the information changes, like I click new and you see that information popping up um, as we speak and the toast uh, deletes the oldest entries automatically. So this is a combination of OpenUI script, OpenUI JavaScript, the Siebel Inbound REST API and that workflow we have just seen. So let's take a look at the code which makes this possible. So here I added to uh, a post load file, literally. Um, so I have a variable to control if the API scanning is uh, available. There's a variable to hold the last record set for comparison. And if scanning is not enabled, just establishing on the whole document body a click event handler and the click event handler starts with generating the headers. Of course, there's a hard-coded base64 password in there, not very secure. And the raw data for the post includes only one uh, input argument. Remember, that's an input or a process property of the workflow. Filter username and we get the well actual username of the user using the OpenUI API. So the method is going to be post with the headers we generated, with the body we generated, with the username. Remember all other process properties are defaulted, so we could pass them in here, like map name and so forth. Then we do a fetch against the Siebel REST API, workflow API, that's 22.3 or higher supports that. And we call the workflow just yeah, by calling the name of the workflow and passing the request options. This is an asynchronous fetch. So then once it comes back, we convert the response to text. And when that comes back, the result can be parsed. So uh, we chase and parse the result. It's a JSON string after all, and we get one one single record. So for the sake of simplicity, I'm going down the drain here into that filtered set list of, that's the, um, well, integration object structure. And there's one result and it's the first result in that filtered result set. So actually cheating a little bit could be, uh, because a user could have more than one running sessions, right? But anyway, we get the first one. And then we compare the last stored record with the current record using JSON stringify. That's yeah, an okay method to compare those two uh, JSON objects. And if they are different, then we well, populate the last record set with the current one and create a little message here, just a little bit of HTML and re retrieve some data, the current view from that session record, the view, the applet, business component, business service, um, component alias, server name, and task ID. So that's some HTML we generate. And I have a helper function to call the toast for shoelace. Um, please refer to uh, other videos where I explain how to use shoelace.js with Siebel OpenUI, but you can simply pop up uh, this HTML anywhere in a box on the screen. So that's when it pops up and stays on screen for 10 seconds. And that's on every click. So let's go back and see. Here we are. And again, if the, if the record stays the same, it's not showing. But if there's some differences, then it's showing a new toast on top of the stack. And while that might be a very uh, strange uh, use case, it 
just shows nicely how to use the Siebel outbound REST framework to well get data from, in this case, the Siebel Cloud Gateway, uh, filter data using the data mapper without any code, and then, uh, well, we have seen some code here, <laughs> write some open UI code to call that workflow and interpret the data and, well, make it useful. Thanks for watching. Take care and bye-bye.